surprise, uh, as was said. Uh, and in case you don't know, we are based in Los Angeles, California, and we've been around uh, about 12 or 13 years. And what we do is that we design prizes, competitions that are global in nature, and we uh, encourage innovation and incentivize innovation from everywhere possibly imaginable. There are three basic elements to an X Prize. One is that we define the problem and not the solution. So we look at the world as it is and say, what are the biggest challenges facing the world? And how can we incentivize people to go out and solve those challenges no matter where they're from? We crowdsource that innovation, particularly in the age of the internet, and we make prizes that are audacious but achievable. And the history of prizes goes back a long way. 300 years ago here in the UK, uh, there was something called the Longitude Prize. And there's, there's a great book called Longitude about the problem of measuring longitude. It turns out that people could dead reckon latitude, but they couldn't figure out how to measure longitude. So ships were crashing into places that they didn't intend to go to. People were dying. Treasures were lost. So the King of England put up a, a prize of roughly $4 million in today's dollars to the people who could develop something that measured longitude. And everybody thought that you know, Sir Arthur Haley would win. It was the age of the great physicists and astronomers. And it turns out that a, a clockmaker won that prize, a guy named John Harrison, who lived in Bristol, England. And nobody could believe that this guy, this, this clockmaker, could beat the great astronomers of the day. And, but he did. And so the point is that you had lots and lots of people in teams, including teams from the, uh, from the Royal Astronomy, competing. And they spent tens and tens of millions of dollars to win a $4 million prize. So Harrison, an unlikely person, won that prize. Charles Lindbergh won a $25,000 prize for flying across the Atlantic from New York to Paris. And Charles Lindbergh was a 25-year-old mail clerk from Joplin, Missouri. He flew from Joplin to Omaha to St. Louis delivering mail. And when the prize was put up, everybody, again, thought that the great admirals and aviators of the day who just come back from World War I would win this prize. Turns out that Lindbergh, who, just, who didn't have anything to lose, you know, decided to cut the edges off of his map to make his plane as light as possible. He used one engine instead of two, figuring that if one of the engines went out, the other probably would go out as well, and he'd, he'd be dead. So why not have one engine? Because it made it substantially lighter. And so Lindbergh took the challenge, won $25,000. Dozens and dozens and dozens of teams spent something like uh, uh, $20 million to win $25,000. And the next day, he became the most famous person in the world. Lindbergh wins the Ortiz $25,000 prize. And what happened was that, that civil aviation took off by an increase of 3,000% the following year. People began to fly. They, they saw it was possible. Transatlantic flights began to happen. And an industry was created because incentive was there to help create that. Fast forward about 75 years, and a guy named Peter Diamandis was an MIT graduate who studied aeronautical engineering. He always wanted to be an astronaut. And he looked at the statistics and realized that getting in uh, to be an astronaut was highly unlikely. And around the time that he realized that his dream was not going to come true, he's a real true space enthusiast, somebody sent him a book called The Spirit of St. Louis about Charles Lindbergh. And he thought, wait a minute, what if we could incentivize civilians to build spaceships to go into space? What if we could democratize space and take it away from governments? And so the Ansari X Prize, uh, he raised $10 million uh, to incentivize teams to build a rocket ship to go twice into Earth's orbit at 100 kilometers and back uh, safely twice in one, week to, uh, in one week to Earth. He started off thinking we should do 100 miles and realized that 100 miles was too audacious and so lowered it to 100 kilometers thinking that you know, especially Americans don't know the difference between kilometers and miles anyway, <laughs> so why not? Uh, so a team funded by Paul Allen won that prize. It was called Spaceship One. And that spaceship that won the SpaceX Prize sits in the Smithsonian Institution next to the Spirit of St. Louis that was flown by Charles Lindbergh. And so what happened was the civilian space industry that is the result of lots of years of planning, lots of years of thinking, lots of years of incentivizing, Richard Branson's got Virgin Intergalactic. Elon Musk has SpaceX. And so an industry was spawned. Um, we do prizes in oceans cleanup. Uh, after the BP oil spill, we incentivized teams to create technology that was at least 2x better than what the industry had been using. 
And during that time, the industry was using the same technology that was used in the uh, uh, Exxon Valdez oil spill 20 years earlier. We have a $30 million Google Lunar Landing X Prize underway right now, $30 million to the team that can build a lunar landing uh, craft, take it to the moon, take samples, and send them back to Earth. And that's going to be completed within two years. We have a tricorder X Prize that's in the final stages where anybody who watched, we're all big Star Trek fans of X Prize, so anybody who watched Star Trek knows the tricorder scans the human body and detects disease. So you've got to detect 15 diseases, uh, and that uh, prize will be awarded very soon. So we have lots of prizes, and for the first time, we're going into what I'll call not the hard sciences, perhaps, but the social sciences, in a sense. We looked at education for a long time and decided that the grand challenge of the world was that there are a ton of kids in this world who go to school and who leave without ever having learned to read or write a word. It is an epic market failure, okay? 250 million to 300 million kids go to school so they can't read. Another 57 million don't have access to any schools. Uh, Elon Musk put up $15 million for this prize, and it is a prize uh, to the team that can create software and content designed to bring children from zero literacy to X literacy in 18 months. Registration for that prize just closed last month. We have 198 teams from 40 countries competing for that prize. We'll down select the top five teams. Each of those teams gets a million dollars. We'll test those five solutions in the field. The winner will get $10 million. And all those five solutions are open sourced and made available uh, to the world. Uh, the content will be in both English and Swahili. The children will be t taught, uh, tested in their native tongue. The thinking is that if we can prove quick localization, if we can prove that children can do this on their own and with each other, then we've made a breakthrough. And some of the work that I did with uh, Nicholas Negropontines, who got to meet Shura and Marianne Wolf at Tufts University that preceded this prize, posited the idea that children could actually do this. They could teach themselves if the technology was right. Technology wasn't right then. Children made some, ga some gains that we noticed in Ethiopia and some villages uh, that were very remote. But the technology wasn't there. The software isn't there. The content isn't dynamic and, and sticky enough to pull kids in. So can we incentivize people to create something so dynamic that it fits in the palm of your hand, that children can have a world-class education on their own? Uh, we also, I'm running out of time, um, we have an Adult Literacy X Prize as well. Registration just opened. In the United States, roughly 36 million adults read at or below the third grade level. 12% uh, of the U.S. population is in that non-literate category. The A primary indicator of... Um, a child's success in school is the literacy rate of her mother. So, you know, you talk about these tests for kids and how do you measure performance and all of these things that come out of the political space. The reality is that there is this cycle that, in general, with few exceptions, is rarely broken. And part of that is because adults don't have access to learning centers to be able to teach themselves how to read. So it's $7 million. Um, to the team that can develop applications for existing mobile technology for adults to take themselves from X literacy to N literacy in 12 months. And, you know, there are a lot of reasons why adults don't do this. One is there's a stigma to it. They don't want to go into schools and admit that they can't read. Two is time. Lots of people work. They don't have time. They have kids. They're trying to struggle uh, holding it all together. Um, and there's lack of persistence. They just, there's not enough time on task. So what if you develop something where you're on the bus for 30 minutes and you're, and you're looking at this thing and it's talking to you. There's an AI-based component to you that tracks your learning curve, that anticipates where you're going, that knows what you don't know so you can teach to it in a certain way. And we think that out of this will come, out of these two prizes, um, will come, I think, innovation that is waiting to be tapped. Innovation that will come from the unlikeliest of sources. I know that for the Global Learning X Prize, you know, Pearson is competing, I think Google's got a team, but I'm hoping for that team from, you know, the coder in Silicon Valley, the artist in Amsterdam, and the storyteller in Nairobi, and the neuroscientist at Tufts all meet together uh, in our meeting space online. You too can meet other teams and join teams right now for that prize and create some, something so dynamic, so challenging, and so engaging for kids that the future of learning, uh, in a sense, will be self-taught. So thank you.